Hey everybody, it's Dr. J, and today, yes, today, we're talking about bond trends. Let's talk chemistry. All right, so the first trend we're going to talk about is bond length. And essentially, bond length is just a distance between the two uh, nuclei of a bond of atoms. So in this case, we're just literally looking at the length of the bond, y'all. Um, so here's the first trend. Uh, more electrons, uh, two atoms share. The shorter the covalent bond. So if we look here, right? Um, we got a carbon, carbon. All these are carbon, carbon bonds. But uh, essentially, right? If you share more electrons, in this case, a triple bond, right? Your bond length is going to be shorter. Okay. So if we look at a triple bond compared to a single bond, uh, carbon, carbon bond. Uh, we're going to see that the bond length is actually longer for those. Okay. So basically, you're sharing more electrons. You know you guys are going to be more closer together. You're not sharing. In this case, only two electrons is a little further apart. Um, as well, bond length decreases from left to right across the period, uh, the period, right? The periodic table. Um, so if we look at carbon carbon, right? But if we go towards the right, in this case, if we go from nitrogen to oxygen, right, we're going to see that the bond length is going to decrease over time. All right, so that's the trend to know. Bond length increases down a column. Uh, so if we look at fluorine, fluorine, 144, and if we go down a column, for instance, bromine, bromine, we're going to see the bond length is uh, dramatically uh, spread apart in this case here. Okay, so bonds get longer as they get weaker. All right, that's the key general trend here. The weaker the bond, the longer the bond length. The stronger the bond, right, in this case, the shorter the bonds. Okay, so that's essentially it, and that explains all three of these trends here. Okay, so now let's talk about bond energy. Bond energy is the amount of energy it takes to break one mole of a bond in a gas phase. Okay, uh, another word for this is actually bond enthalpy. All right, so you can use this bond energy to find the enthalpy of changes of reaction. Okay, depending on how those bonds are either breaking or how you're making those new bonds to make whatever products you're making in this case. And then understand that, right, when bonds are being formed, we understand that those are going to be more stable. So if we look at methane, right, CH4, for instance, right, the total energy of methane is going to be 1656 kilojoules per mole. But we under we got to understand, right, that if we look at here methane, we have a carbon bond to a hydrogen bond. So we have one of these, but in reality, we have four CH bonds. Okay, so we can estimate any CH bond based on this fact. So in this case, if we wanted to, we could just divide that by four, and that's how we get 414 kilojoules uh, per mole for this particular CH bond. Right. But if we look at chloroform, it's going to be a little bit different. Right. These are CH bonds, three of them, in fact. But we have this carbon to chlorine bond. So in this case, we got to do it a little bit different. Right. So in this case, for this total energy, we're going to have a total energy of 1581 kilojoules per mole for my entire chloroform compound. Now, we can use a CH bond that we know is going to be 414. Right. And we could determine the chlorine to carbon bond here. So using that value, we could just do 1581 minus three of those CH bonds, right? And that's going to give me a value of 339 for our chlorine and carbon bond here, right? So in general, right, as we mentioned before, what we need to find out is that what we need to understand, right? We understand that when we look at bond length, Weaker bonds have longer bond lengths. So we think about bond energy, the more electrons two atoms share, the stronger the covalent bond. So when we're talking about bond energy, right, this triple bond carbon has an energy level of 837 kilojoules. Compared to the single bond, as it decreases going down to the single bond, we can see it's 347 kilojoules, right? So we can see the bond energy for triple bonds is extremely high, but we also know that the bond length is pretty short. Compared to the single bond, what do we notice? The bond energy pretty low, but we understand that the bond length will be pretty big for those. Okay, so the shorter the covalent bond, the stronger the bond, right? So once again, going back, right, if we look at bromine fluorine, 237, bromine chlorine, 218, bromine bromine, uh, 196. 
So once again, we think about bond length. Romy, Romy had the longest bond length because it has the longest bond length. It's going to be the weakest bond. Okay, that's it. Bonds get weaker down a column. Bonds get stronger across the period. So basically, it's the opposite effect here. Okay, and that's bond energy. So like I mentioned, right, if we're finding uh, enthalpy using bond energies, we're going to do it in this fashion, right? Once again, in this case, enthalpy is the sum of energy to break and form bonds in a reaction. So basically, if we're going to do this method, we need to understand that in this case, uh, if you're breaking a bond, that's going to require energy. So you're requiring energy, you're absorbing energy, that's going to be an endothermic reaction, right? And if your bond is uh, forming, releasing energy, then that's going to be an exothermic reaction. All right, endothermic, exothermic, everybody. Check out the video about enthalpy, right? Check out the video about enthalpy um, to learn more about all things enthalpy.